revelation means something different in this culture, right? And it's important to us. So what I understand, and brother, you can correct me, is that the origin of the Vedic scriptures are based on rishis or or religious individuals that mm. looked within themselves and meditated Correct. and heard within themselves yeah. whispers which they then articulated. Correct. And which then eventually became the scriptures. Now, there is no source that I can find unless somebody of of when this happened or how it happened. Yes. Uh, I mean, there is an estimated date that uh, Vedas were put together around 1500 BC, and there are uh, four types the Rig Veda, the Sama Veda, the Yajur Veda, and Atharva Veda, right? These are the main scriptures of the Hindu philosophies, right? And uh, Hinduism is also called, amazingly, Vedic. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, religion, okay. Uh, it is called, uh, 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 yeah, it is called a collection of Vedic religions, right? Referring to the scripture, right? And also, there are other scriptures as well that were uh, written that were, that were put together uh, later on. Hindus believe that the Vedas transcend all time and don't have a beginning or an end, right? This is what the belief is. There is no beginning and there is no end to the Vedas. There is no doubt that Vedas are put together by humans. And after their meditations and their mystical experiences, they put down their thoughts or their ideas, their philosophies into writing. And these writings became sacred. Uh, very similar to what happened to the, the, the Christian writings in the New Testament, right? Initially, the New Testament was put down as memoirs of the apostles, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the New Testament books, writings of Paul and the Gospels, in the first and the second century, mostly they were known as, these writings were known as the memoirs of the apostles. It was only in the third century where some church fathers started to refer to the books of the New Testament as scripture. Scripture prior to the third century was strictly speaking the Old Testament, not the writings of the New Testament. The writings of the New Testament are called the, uh, the, the memoirs, right? Later on, they were given that higher status of scripture by later church fathers. Okay, And I'm not making this up, by the way. This can be seen in any book on the history of the New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. Likewise, these books were put down by rishis, by mystics, by thinkers, in, in some cases completely anonymous. We, ha we have no idea as to who put down these uh, scriptures for the Hindus. Uh, the origin is very difficult to trace, and they were copied uh, from. Uh, and 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 we find the same problem with the Vedas as well. You know, when it comes when it comes to the textual differences, there are many. There are many between the copy. Okay, and um, and so then but, they have. But Adnan, don't don't the Hindus normally say that they they don't really say there is something like an origin of Hinduism? Because they, uh, if if I think Brother Abid might be able to, I think it's very this. important to understand that uh, yeah. you know, first of all, you know, uh, if you look at Hinduism, and I I tend to refer to it as a civilization rather than necessarily a faith, hmm. and it's it has become tied in with what is the Indian subcontinent, but it is not limited to it because uh, the influence of Hin uh, you know Indian civilization and and that in, encompasses the sciences, it in, encompasses the ideologies, it encompasses the religious beliefs and religious ideas, and they were exported out uh, into, for example, Indonesia, what is present there, Burma, uh, Thailand, and so forth. So you, you see that, you see it's uh, evidence of that, and it still continues today. So it's, it's, uh, going back to the origin story, uh, the Vedas are referred to as both heard and, you know, remembered. Now mm -hmm. that actually alludes to a oral tradition. Once upon a time, when you did not have paper to capture, you know, your scriptures, you know, transcribe them, 
or you do not want, even if you carried them on parchments and vellum and so on, the, the fact was that uh, as you are migrating and moving, they're very easy to lose or often they got destroyed. So traditionally in lots of cultures, their beliefs, intrinsic beliefs were often captured in form of uh, poetry, in form of what, you know, in this case we are referring to as Vedas, they were sung. They were heard. That's why it refers to it as recital, right? They were heard and they were, remem they were remembered. Mostly now, uh, these are poetical collections and hymns. Yes. And like, this is where, yeah. and this they is the same to... thing. Exactly. The word I was coming to was hymns. Yeah. In, in the case of, you know, tradition, if you look at the Christian traditions, they refer to as hymns. If you look at uh, uh, the tra tra tradition with the Indo-Iranians, uh, Indo they, they refer to them as katas. And there are about 17 of those, quite, quite, uh, some of them quite, uh, obviously quite lengthy. And the ideas on those uh, are very similar to what you have in the Sanskrit Vedas. Sanskrit and early Persian were cognate languages. They are mutually understood. In fact, right, if you want to research uh, early Persian, you have to rely upon Sanskrit. 